Anna, look, we learned the slice. Yes. But now, remember that story you told me about that guy you were playing who was doing these crazy shots? George, in clinic, yeah. yes. Very tricky. His bread and butter, the first one slice. we showed. Yeah. The slice? The first one was slice, right? The side spin. Side spin. Okay. He does it all the time. It's so hard to... It drives you crazy. Yeah, so we say, if we survive George, then we are good. So today I'm going to teach you how to defend against those type of shots, okay? Okay. Back up, here a couple more. <laughs> Come on, Anna, go. Here, one more. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Last one. Last one, Anna. <laughs> Alright. Is this what that guy does to you in practice? No, yours are more nasty. <laughs> Mine are more nasty? <laughs> it's, I, Completely unpredictable. I put a little extra funk on there. But here's Ooh. where here's where a lot of recreation players I'm out of breath. I, I didn't listen, move. Where a lot of recreation players get in trouble with these balls is in a few different ways. So number one, they try to predict. They try to make predictions on how the ball is going to behave. The problem is with these balls it's very unpredictable. Also, a lot of times at the recreation, recreational level, these strokes are made accidentally. So nobody can predict what's gonna happen. Yeah. The person that hit the ball doesn't even know what's gonna happen. Opponent doesn't know what's gonna happen. So it's very unpredictable, therefore you shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't try to predict and then try to figure out what the ball is going to do afterwards. You're going to get frozen with your feet, the thought process takes too long. Simply don't think about it, don't, don't try to predict what the ball is going to do, but keep your feet moving as long as possible and just keep your eyes on the ball in real time. Try to track it in real time. So as it's flying to you and then makes that curve, you track that curve in real time. This is going to give you much... With my feet? With your feet and like, your eyes. With. Your feet and your eyes. The ball's coming. You don't try to predict where it's going to go. Follow it in real time. As it goes there, you go with it. But then it usually goes opposite direction. It does. But you, that's if you're predicting it. Oh. Then it goes in the opposite direction. If you do it in real time, you follow the ball as it's flying. So as, it's, as it takes a turn, it's you insane. go with the ball. With the power of my mind, I change the direction of the ball. So what you got to do is uh, not worry about predictions and just yes. go with real time, mm -hmm. okay? Also, another reason why a lot of players uh, have a hard time with these type of balls is shot selection. So they hit way too hard. So they hit too hard when the ball is low and they usually don't bend either. And when the racket has to bend this way when it drops below the level of the handle and now you hit it hard, you have a very disadvantageous position of the racket head and you're going to hit up on the ball, most likely with the string slightly open and it's very easy to miss the ball long as a result of it. So what you got to do is, remember our forehand topspin lesson? Yes. Remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, we got to do forehand topspin. That is the solution oh. to any low ball problem. Number one thing you got to do is bend. When the ball is low, you got to stay low. Do this with me. Do a lunge right here. Do a lunge. Lower. Mm -hmm. Back knee touching the ground. When the low ball, you got to really get like this. Oh, wow. Now this is physically exhausting and very very challenging physically but that's what has to be done you have to be low when the ball is low and in addition to that you have to make a vertical movement of the racket head you have to go up with the racket as much as you can to be able to put top spin on it now what you're doing with that ball you're not trying to hit a winner you're not trying to do anything spectacular you're just trying to neutralize the ball get it back in play with a decent amount of height and pace and then you try to do better on the next shot So let me give you a few more and you try to do exactly that. Follow the ball in real time, you bend super low, and you put a lot of spin on it. Go again. When the ball is low, you stay low. Beautiful job, Anna. Here we go. Absolutely spectacular. You see how easy that is? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that now. Here, back up. Keep tracking it. Keep moving your feet. 
Good. Don't get stuck. When you're stuck, you can't move anymore. Keep moving longer. Batter on a beautiful job. All right, let me see backhand. Stay lower, back up. Okay, one thing that's important, come on up real quick. When you get one of these super low balls, it's not gonna be possible to raise up. So it's one of those instances where you actually stay low. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't really go up with your legs. Okay. Because you're so low, you can't get out of that position that easily. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when the ball is extremely low, you also have to stay low. So basically, it's like this. Watch. You get a super low backhand, and you go here. You just stay down here. Also, what's interesting about this is that you can see the pros doing this. When that is the case, when you're extremely low, and you're staying low, you can't finish the shot all the way because the torso rotation gets interrupted. So you're gonna have a shorter finish as well. But it doesn't change the fact that you're still trying to put spin. You're basically trying to stay alive. You're not looking to get fancy and trying to be super aggressive. You're trying to stay alive and that is what has to be done. All right? Uh -huh. Here we go, come on. Down, down. Keep tracking the ball longer. Go up, Anna. What are you doing? What is that? <laughs> don't, don't slice, do a regular backhand. Good. Oh my goodness, so good, Anna. Now watch this. Come on, track it. Keep your feet moving, you're stuck. Don't get stuck, keep moving. Anna, keep moving. Better, Anna, good job. All right, let me mix it up, forehand and backhand, okay? Back up. Oh, again. Come on, regular forehand. Good. Go up more, lift that racket up. Good, Anna. Wonderful job. Go, 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 go. Come on, Anna. Come on, Anna. Better. Just keep moving, it's that simple. Keep watching the ball and keep moving. Keep moving, keep moving. Don't get stuck with your feet. Keep moving. Better. Gotta have to get out of the way. Come, come. Go again. Good, Anna, last one. Give you a crazy one. Keep moving. All right, one more. It's going to be the craziest one I've ever done. Here we go. Anna, amazing. When it comes to the low ball, the most important thing is to stay low on a low ball. Also, maybe even more important, is to keep moving. Because you saw how often you got stuck. Keep moving, keep moving. And you started studying the ball yes. without moving, yes. trying to predict where it's going and stuff like that. Don't worry about predictions. Follow the ball in real time and keep moving the whole time. Follow the ball the whole time. Don't commit to the ball too early. Those two things hurt players the most. Because when you're lower, you have a better chance to get the proper angle of the racket face. And then also, when you actually hit the ball, make the most top spin that you can with your forehand and with your backhand. Eventually, when we improve the slice a little bit, what we did in our last lesson, we will be able to slice those balls as well because it's a lot easier to slice a low ball than to hit it with a two-handed backhand, like I said before. Mm -hmm. So as your slice gets better, maybe a year from now, a couple of years from now, you will be able to slice those balls as well. Mm -hmm. On the forehand, a slice is unnecessary. You can always, uh, because you have more length here, you have only one arm, it's very easy to reach those balls. So it's unnecessary to do a forehand slice. It is often something that rec players do. It's kind of a lazy shot. Mm -hmm. So definitely on the forehand low ball, you try to do topspin as much as you can. On the back end, you have a little bit more options. All right, so you feel better about the low ball. Next time you play that guy, you're gonna be more confident? Yes. Yes? Uh -huh. yes. All right, nice work. Good Thanks. job, Anna.